Welcome to the Cadence Webinar Series. Hello everyone and welcome to our webinar, How to Plan, Organize, and Host a Corporate Event. My name is Haley and I am the Lead of Marketing Operations here at Cadence. And as we get started today, I'd love to pose a question to all of you. Who has experienced a feeling of burnout over the last year? I'll be honest, I've certainly had those days myself, you know, the exhaustion and overwhelm of that 24-7, uh, you know, work day. And it's no surprise that the remote landscape has been taxing for employees, you know, all over the country and all over the world. No secret there. And of course, there are upsides like working in your pajamas and being able to cook whatever you want. You know, there's definitely those upsides of remote work. But one of the things that we are losing is that camaraderie between employees. And we believe here at Cadence that events are one of the best ways to reinvigorate that company spirit. So that's why we wanted to get into corporate events today, how to plan them, how to organize them and put on an event that truly makes a difference for your company. So to kick us off, we have our very own CEO, Michael Buckley, to give us some more information uh, about all of this. Michael. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining today. Uh, today's webinar is focused on how to plan, organize, and host a corporate event. Uh, this is really intended for the internal event teams at a company or for any event planning agency or really anyone on the kind of partner side that really helps put together these events. Uh, Cadence's primary love and passion in this industry is to really be the best platform for an organization to be able to continuously engage their employees, customers, and communities across all of their corporate events. And because there's so many similarities to many of those events that you do across a year, we really want to be able to build the platform in a way that your focus doesn't have to be on event management and event planning and can much more focus on content and experiences rather than um, here we go again with registration or with schedule building or with people management. Um, we really want to help make those things much easier. So what we'll be covering today um, is the value of corporate events, you know, why we tend to put them on in the first place, uh, the types of corporate events, and then how to plan, organize, host, and learn from your corporate events. Uh, and we have a wonderful team member here at Cadence, uh, Carolina Ruto, to join um, at the end to go over an amazing initiative that she's been working on to make things um, much more clear and organized and um, helpful reminders on how to be able to plan, organize, and host uh, amazing events. So what is the value uh, of corporate events? Uh, many corporations spend hundreds of thousands to millions of dollars on a singular event. Uh, so why do we go about um, spending that much money? And then also, of course, the time and effort that it goes into putting them on. This was, I thought, a great kind of summarization of it that the Fortune 100 chief marketing officer said that meetings and events provide the highest return on investment for any marketing. I found that majority of the organizations we work with, the number one marketing expense is events. You know, as the marketplace grows increasingly competitive and the companies really want to build lasting relationships with their internal team, but then also, of course, their customers, the events are a much more ideal format than sending like targeted emails or social media marketing or paid advertising. It's the best way to market your brand, both internally and externally. When you get to speak to your audience about your strategy, your brand, your products, your services, um, it's much more meaningful when it is and memorable when it kind of is in person. And uh, corporate events tend to be for engaging with employees, customers and community. I, I really learned quite a bit and got a lot of inspiration from how Salesforce you know, really started thinking about Dreamforce. And for them, it was really becoming the voice of the customer was the event. And it wasn't about necessarily targeting leads, customers, partners. It was more when you bring them together, whether in person or virtually, 
they're the ones that actually end up teaching you the most or end up being the best marketing for your company because they're the ones that use the product or the services, share the use cases, um, provide feedback, testimonials, honest referrals that become much more organic in driving revenue growth than um, sometimes the, the, the time and cost it might take sometimes to do like outbound sales and outbound marketing. That's what really kind of led us down the road of really learning the ins and outs of corporate events and what primary reasons for a corporate event. Here's a few that I wanted to, to share with you. Of course, raising the brand awareness um, is, is really important internally for this strategy, the goals, the objections, the, the competitors, the value propositions, the marketplace. Um, but culture building, of course, is massive for internal purposes or external with customers, leads, partners, but acknowledgement and celebrating wins, bringing employees together to help build the culture. The boosting of company morale. Um, think about every employee that's been working countless hours at the office or at home, which has only increased since the pandemic. But now being able to bring them to an environment that allows people to reset, come together and get to know each other builds the relationships helps reduce stress, helps improve motivation. It's fantastic for team building. You know, you don't always get the chance to see each other or get to know each other and then learn, really begin to respect each other. And it's difficult um, to sometimes do that when you are in different floors or offices or remote. And that's where the beauty of events, specifically in person, can really help. Um, it's a great place to validate and reward your employees for all the amazing work that's been done, whether that's like a party or games night, award ceremony. Um, it can be how often do your teams get to see the other teams and see all the incredible work that they are doing to understand what operations, marketing, sales, design, product, customer success, finance, right? All of these amazing teams, bringing them together to be able to share all the amazing things that are happening cross-functionally. Um, are is an amazing aspect. The bringing people together, you know, obviously getting to know each other and, and encourages more respect and emotional intelligence between team members, makes the communication much stronger. Delivering strategy, education, and generating ideas is really one of the primary purposes, whether internal or external. Uh, you want your internal team to know your, your company mission, your strategy, your goals, your objectives, so that everyone is aligned. But you also want your customers, your partners, your leads, your community to know those same things. And when the teams come together, whether it's your internal team or the customers, it's also where some of the amazing ideas um, are generated. Again, your customers are the ones that can often generate some of the best ideas for your company. And then it's also amazing for gaining insights. You know, you can do this um, through other channels, but when you are delivering education, insights, um, strategy, it's then the best format when people are together to then gain them back from them. And we're going to go into that in regards to the ways you might want to do that in gathering posts, videos, asked questions, feedback, survey responses, different activities you could do. And then, of course, employee development and growth, uh, really important for internal events. That's why you tend to do your, your sales meetings, marketing meetings, learning, development, um, trainings, coaching. It's one of the best areas and mediums to digest education, to talk about the knowledge gaps, um, and then to be able to help grow from there. Those are some of the primary like reasons why you would put the investment into the corporate events. The primary types of corporate events, sales and marketing events, product launches, trainings, appreciation events would be like leadership retreats, incentive events as examples, uh, sometimes just celebrations and parties. Conferences can be, um, you know, your user conferences, typically where you want to bring in your customers, your partners, your leads, your community. Sponsored events may be obviously someone else's conference, Congress, trade show, but you are sponsoring as a company to be there for your booth and or send employees there. Um, that's another really important corporate event. Um, social events that really focus on that, getting to know each other and networking. And then you want to have a lot of times other types of 
customer events that might be advisory boards or forums as well to partner summits, advisory boards, um, great format again for talking about strategy, ideation, and then gaining insights. So how do you go about planning a corporate event? If there is that much of a massive investment, sometimes we've seen too often that you know the event date, you know the overall like theme of it and why you want to do it, but the planning process is where some of the, the gaps exist the most. And if you're gonna spend that much money, you really want to know um, what, what the intention behind your event is. And I'll share the, the reflections and ideation that we had internally at Cadence when we went about doing our annual internal company event. But you want to set clear and measurable goals. You might wanna ask yourself, what will success look like by the, by the end of the event? Um, everyone's response to this is different, but it's an amazing kind of initial ideation uh, when you begin the event. Cause some people say, um, my boss is really happy. Uh, the, the attendees gave a great score. Attendees actually show up for my event. Uh, sponsor activation is strong so that we know that we got um, great um, return on investment for them, which benefits us. Uh, maybe it can be things that are, um, you know, I, I don't have a meltdown. Um, some of these are like some of the questions, I mean, the responses that people give, and it is a great exercise when you start. The one that I love the most is, is what's the story that you want to tell, but more so what your audience will tell. Um, I learned this quite a bit from Splash that did an amazing event marketing um, video about the, the ideation of this. When you go to an event as an attendee and you leave it, what are the things that you tell your friends, your family, your colleagues, your, your, your network? That's one of the most important things to kind of consider because they are the ones that will come back. They are the ones that will also um, advocate and, and share and bring in you know, future attendees for any other event that you do. So a large part of it is, what do you hope that they feel? You know, what do you hope that they experience that becomes the story they tell? And when you start in that regard from the beginning, it really helps align everything that comes afterwards that we're gonna get into as well too. Now, what I wanted to share um, for our uh, co company event, we thought about what was the, what are the goals and the objectives and what do we hope people understand? And when we started this ideation process, um, let me go to, uh, let me share my screen here for a second and I'm going to bring up um, what we jotted down when we went through um, our ideation process. And Ian, just give me the, the thumbs up when we, if it's properly displaying here. It looks like it is. So we wanted to be focused on clear communication of our vision, strategy, goals, and object, objectives. We wanted to address the learning lessons from 2021. Um, we wanted to start with what are our intended outcomes. And these are some of the other questions that you can see here just in regards to what the process was. And what, what did we ultimately hope to gain out of this was three things. How do we bring clarity to goals, objectives, and initiatives, and key results are? How do we bring clarity to how it relates to each department and each team member? And how do we bring clarity to how their performance relates to the company's success and then their success in career growth and bonuses? That was a process that we kind of went through in thinking through each aspect to then lead to um, what do we now, how do we structure our agenda? How do we structure our workshops, our activities, our surveys, our forms, and ultimately our measurement? Those are the three questions that we wanted to ask before the event and then also after the event to see in this investment in creating each session, putting the time and effort into delivering the strategy, um, into doing workshops that then help close the gaps to then reinforce at the end of the event, which was some of the feedback that we had received where we could improve was that you'd have amazing day one, day two, but you didn't reinforce strongly in the 
day three, so you kind of lose the messaging, right? Um, that's what set us off in everything in regards to maybe guest speakers, in regards to topics, in regards to um, exercises, feedback forms. So that's how you want to start to plan. Then how do you begin to organize your, your corporate event? This is where you want to determine first what you want to communicate, right? And that's where that initial step of what are the goals and the objectives? What will success look like? What is the story? That then brings to light and clarity, what do we want to communicate? How do we want the event registration page to look? How do we want the communications to feel and convey? Um, what do we want our event landing page to look like? Uh, what do we want the schedule to be like? What do we want the branding, the look and feel, right? Determine first what you want to communicate. And our main kind of function as a platform is to be able to be a communication platform. And most times, as you all know, which we're going to get into a little bit on the checklist aspect, most communication for an event, historically, you know, going back a decade plus, all event information lived in an Excel file or a PowerPoint or in documents that get printed out. Sadly, that is still the case. I know for a lot of us that do a lot of the active work for events. So when we set out to kind of create cadence, it's, well, how do you take this information that you typically have in an Excel or in a PowerPoint and be able to most effectively communicate it through technology? And that can be schedule, attendees, speakers, companies, resources, home screen, communications. Determine first what you want to communicate. Then you want to begin promoting your event. Promoting it for an internal company event can purely be the email communications with the registration site. It could be like a company announcement and memo. It could be announced during a company meeting. Um, if it's for an external purposes, you want to determine the channels that you are going to be promoting it. You can do customer marketing, of course, which is marketing to your existing customers and partners. Um, but then also how are you going to go about promoting it to uh, the larger um, industry if you want to bring in new leads and the community. So what social channels are those? Are there paid advertisements of any variety? Um, do you do referral marketing so that you can have your attendees, speakers, sponsors bring in other incredible um, people in their network? Then you want to bring people into the event, right? So of course that would be registrations and invites. But once you actually have brought the people, like you actually have your registered attendees, you're going to welcome them into your event experience. And you know, obviously, a lot of times, if you use Eventbrite, um, there, you register, you get a confirmation email. But there's not much of an event experience after that. And that's where the event technology kind of really comes in. Um, once the, someone has registered, whether for free or paid ticketing in particular, um, or for internal company purposes, you want to make sure that the event has um, purpose in it, right? What information or communications do you have in there? Uh, what kind of engagement do you have in there? Do you have a way to connect people together, connect people to sponsors? Um, so you want to bring them in and how, what is the communication method to be able to bring them in? You want to make sure that you organize people, groups, and speakers. And this is one of the biggest distinctions between a corporate event and other events. Corporate events, especially internal, you're going to have different job roles, departments. To, if it's sales, marketing, or field-based, you're going to have territories, districts, regions, global regions. You're going to have departments, divisions, brands, right? That's the most time-consuming and often stressful aspect um, for event organizers. So if you are within a company, what I would recommend there is try as best as possible to have your HR roster, such as like if you're, if you're using Workday, you want to make sure that that is part of your event process and event technology, because you do not want to have to go through each event, each time, trying to find out if you have the latest Excel spreadsheet that has the right group for Sales West. It is so frustrating. It is the same process over and over and over again per event. And that is the most time consuming, which leads to stress and anxiety um, for uh, the stakeholders, for the direct events team, for partners, right? So you wanna make sure that you can organize the people with the respective groups. So 
one, make sure you do have a HR roster of some sort, because if, for instance, in Cadence, you can import it or integrate it so that you have all of the employees listed, all of the groups listed based upon the district, department, job role. And you can also do the same thing with your customers. Ideally, your event technology can also integrate with your CRM because you don't want to have to do the same process over and over again for each event that you host per year. And that's what leads to groups. Groups makes it much easier to be able to target message and target communicate to set permissions at the event level based on groups. So you get a really curated experience. That's really important for internal companies because it's frustrating that an employee knows they're in sales in the West region. And if they have to fill out that information again, which many event registration platforms make employees do, which doesn't give the best employee experience, doesn't my company know what my title is or what department I'm in? Um, but then it's also, you, you love the feeling as an employee that the company understands you, your job role, your department, um, and you see it in the way that the communications are sent and the way that your event is aligned. Um, and you also wanna make sure that your speakers um, are set up too. So before you kind of really start to hype the event to your audience, you want to make sure that do you have the profile pictures? Do you have the biography? Do you have the links, right? Make sure that there is as much information possible for attendees, customers, groups, speakers. And then you want to think about what is your communication cadence from the day that registration begins to the day that you welcome them in. How often do you want to communicate with them through email, social or within the platform. We find that you want to typically do that for an event in which you're opening registration 90 days before or welcoming the audience in, you know, 30 days or more. You want to be able to communicate about seven times leading up to the second that the event begins. And it doesn't, it should not be the same exact communication. Ideally, you're doing some target based communications based upon their group. Could be VIP ticket type versus general. But you also want to be looking at the analytics as well, too, to maybe those have not, that have not yet accessed the event, communicate to them. Those that have, that have checked out people for networking, send a communication to them to make you know, them even more engaged in networking. So you want to have those, like ideally seven communications, be contextual, build your schedule, check out our sponsors, get social in the live feed, Check out the amazing resources we've released, right? Um, different purposes, and then see, you'll see of those, which ones really engage your audience to access the event before the event even begins. And then hype up your audience. Um, share amazing, um, even within the event, separate from any external communications outside the event. Within Cadence, use the live feed, use the messaging, use the home tiles to visually excite the audience with the images and the videos, but also just with the context and the information really important aspects there too. Now, how do you host a corporate event? And what I mean by host a corporate event would be um, when the event has actually begun. Now, this is where you want to focus on a few specific areas. Review the event. Um, we love to do an event review meeting with our customers about two weeks before, like right before they're gonna welcome the audience in most people tend to welcome the audience into the event two weeks before. Um, some do it long, earlier if there's purposes of networking, business meetings, sponsor engagement, building your schedule, right? The entire schedule is kind of build your own schedule based on the tracks and the different offerings. Um, so review your event. Uh, Caro is going to get into this in a moment with the actual things that we are working on to give you the granular checklist items for each one of these aspects. But Make sure your, your, your home screen looks beautiful. Make sure that the images are high quality. Make sure the tiles are really conveying the things that are most important to you, but also what you think the different groups might be most interested in so that they have one click access to get to building their schedule, checking out sponsors, engaging in games. Um, make sure your schedule is aligned. This is the most important part when it comes to a corporate event that is, um, you know, a sales train, sales meeting, marketing meeting, um, review the schedule, review the tracks, review the breakouts. Um, you can search by user or by group. So you can do spot checking to make sure that everything is aligned as it should be. 
You can download reports, download the registration report to see the capacities in any given room or online that might make a difference in if you want an overflow room or bring more chairs or use a smaller room if registration numbers are a little bit smaller there. Um, you want to review the people and the groups. Make sure your groups are correct, of course, because if you're going to target, if you're going to sign things within your event on the top home screen and the menu, you want to make sure that they are seeing what they should see. Um, and if you're going to communicate with them, you want to make sure that they are communicating to the right group. You want to make sure your speakers look great as well, too. Um, review the attendee analytics before, like lead, like the second you open registration, review the attendee analytics. Um, how many people did you invite? How many registered? Um, how many have accessed your event, accessed your event by day, accessed your event on web or by app? It doesn't take long to do those things. And, and there's small nuggets there that allow you to understand how your event's tracking. Um, but then also the beautiful part of events and event technology is then you can you can learn and make beautiful adjustments based upon the analytics. Maybe you add different tiles or you rearrange the order of the tiles or the menu or you send notifications linking to the featured sponsor or a great new resource you have. And then you get to see from there, does it make a difference? And then when it does, those are the beautiful aha moments. So review the an attendee analytics um, leading up to your event and then throughout your event too. Um, I love doing these. And one small thing too, when, when I'm like leading an in-person event, I love changing the home screen. Um, I might change it once a day. I might change it sometimes based on weather. Um, as a creator, it's re that's like the most fun thing that we do often in, in event planning. Um, we get to build an event based upon what we be believe will be the best attendee experience. So when I change that home screen, when it's the morning and it's a sunrise photo, or I was in San Antonio and it snowed for the first time in 20 years. So I somehow found a, a San Antonio snow image and changed it. And the absolute delight on people's faces, like how does the app know? It was just quickly changing an image, right? And that's small things that build such delight that reinforce your brand quite a bit too. Um, engage, uh, schedule the communications before the event begins. You already know maybe what your communication cadence may be. So schedule them because once an event is off and running, which is the thrill of events, you, you want to be on top of everything, but it's, it's not always easy. So the best you can, can schedule those communications, morning of communication, day end communication, um, shuttle schedule, um, one hour break to get ready for the district diner rounds. Um, Go uh, visit our sponsors during the first break. Um, start connecting and networking with people, right? Um, those are amazing kind of just notifications to kind of pre-schedule. Engage your audience. That also is really helpful for notifications, but I always recommend like using the social wall, which most event technologies have, to be able to kind of capture the moments and engage them using competitions that reinforce the goals and the objectives so that people engage with the different activities and experiences at your event. This is the, the learning lesson that I said that we are trying to get stronger and stronger at in our internal meetings. Whatever the goals and the objectives are, whatever the messaging is, reinforce it, reinforce it, reinforce it. Reinforce it maybe right after the session ends. Reinforce it maybe at the end of the day. Definitely reinforce enforce it during show close, but reinforce it after the event too. There's a certain reason why learning and development focuses so much on 30 days, 60 days, 90 days after the learning activity. Um, it's how the brain works. So make sure if there's really important things to share that you are reinforcing it. And obviously as a company, that's your overall mission and your, and your objectives and strategy for the year. So you want to continuously host events to reinforce that, but outside of the events, make sure you constantly reinforce that. Um, reinforce the activities. So everything that is going to go on at the event, um, reinforce it. Uh, it's great. People often do wor uh, workshops, breakouts, but they don't communicate early enough what the workshop's about, what the activity's about. Make sure you put that in the description of the session, in the communications, reinforce the intended outcome of the activities. But the activities could also mean 
it's um, the welcome reception in, at 6 p.m. Reinforce when it starts. Reinforce the dress, the dress code, the attire. Um, it's such a, a constantly asked question when I'm there in person at events. And that one simple communication helps clarify it so everyone's not asking, yeah, you know what the dress code is for tonight? Um, or what kind of food is it? So reinforce as best as possible. And then, and then lastly, and, and most importantly for hosting a corporate event, acknowledge and appreciate the audience. If it's an internal team, thank them for what they do and, and, and why you have put the time and effort into hosting this event because it's to acknowledge and appreciate them. If it's a end, end user fo focused conference, um, thank your customers, thank your partners, thank your leads. Thank you guys for joining today as an example. Um, acknowledge and appreciate them. And then also, which we'll get into here, is how do you learn from a corporate event? And this is what you also want to acknowledge and appreciate. But review all the uh, audience engagement analytics. There is so much to understand here, right? Uh, the second item I have here is event and session feedback. Really, really important, and that's what people most traditionally do. Definitely do that, of course. I see people sometimes just do event feedback. If you could do session feedback for like the key sessions, whether that's the um, main stage kickoff, whether that's the opening session, whether that's certain departmental um, focuses, uh, gather the feedback, gather the feedback on the duration, where the objectives clear, um, speaker effectiveness, um, are there topics you'd like to see included next time? If you're putting that much investment into an event, you don't want just the overall event feedback. You, you want to help each speaker understand what worked well and then what can be improved. And the other thing to note there is you can use surveys and cadence. You can use um, SurveyMonkey, Typeform, Slido, right, to gather feedback. But there's other methods that I think are fantastic, too. Um, the one that we use the most is Video Ask by Typeform. I've seen the difference in gathering feedback in video or audio format. You still get the transcript, so you get the, the text sentiment analysis that you can do. But you actually get the more human sentiment that comes from audio and video. And then that also creates content for you. It, it's your testimonials. It's content that you can repurpose throughout your event, after the event, on social channels. Um, but review the audience engagement analytics, right? You might have a, a hater at your event that gives you terrible feedback, but you look at the analytics and it's like, well, that, actually that person that person was everywhere in this event, right? Um, it's probably a passionate person that is, that, but they were actively engaged, but they just gave poor feedback. Um, find out based upon your groups, what aspects of the event, where did they go the most? How many people, what tiles were clicked on the most on the home screen? What sessions were the best attended? Um, what content was downloaded the most? Um, what groups or people connected with other people the most? Um, what messaging channels were the most popular? Who posted the most to the live feed? You'll learn a lot of things there um, over time. And that's what you wanna do to be able to learn. Uh, the feedback, the engagement, the sentiment analysis, um, I see people doing more and more and more. Um, in our live feed, take a look at it. See what are, what's posted. What are, it, what are the posts about? Um, go to the messaging. What channels are created? Look at the messaging tra transcripts for public channels or for when you're in Symphony. Look at that content because, again, that's the voice of the end user, whether it's an employee or whether it is a, a customer. It's their voice directly to you. So uh, try to understand that because that will help your entire business, but then also each event that you host. Um, insight gathering, the company events, this is one of the most important things. Um, we, we do a lot of leadership events and let's say you hope that 30 to 40% minimum responded to surveys or to ask a question or to live polling. Um, if you sometimes can get five to 10% of leadership to respond, every insight they share is invaluable. Typically, leadership will actually um, provide feedback more than any other audience group because they're like, well, this, this is financially benefiting me to make sure that uh, we are growing and improving as a company. So the, the asked questions from your, your employees or your customers 
are potentially the most valuable thing that you can look at because that helps reinforce what you're already doing well and helps close the gaps of where you need to have their messaging. Um, it also can be in the live polling, right, or trivia, if you do pre and post knowledge checks, Overall, where are their knowledge gaps? Where are their knowledge gaps between regions, between departments? That helps understand where you need to reinforce education more, but it also might give you an understanding of how effective the department is, the, the, the manager, the, the, the department head is. Um, when you're doing it for territories, districts, regions, you start to find the differences in maybe uh, manager effectiveness based upon knowledge gaps. Um, it's just worth really looking into those insights. And then cadence on our end, when we work directly with our customers and our partners, the debriefs, the debriefs are so helpful for us when we get to speak to the customer afterwards and to ask those simple questions of what worked really well, where would you like to see feed uh, improvement? What was the audience's feedback, right? Um, and we're doing that usually together with the partners, the event logistic planning management team, the creative or brand agency, the production company. Those are the, those are amazing to just get to talk about the incredible event that you did. Um, maybe air out some of the frustrations um, to then really align on, well, this is what we'd like to ma make an improvement upon next time so that you're even more excited to start the next event. Um, and that's what I'd leave you with before we hand it over to, to Caro is I see too often that events feel like the, the stress is, 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 is so high, of course, right? Like event planning is one of the top five most stressful jobs. But events are beautiful. They're exciting. They're energetic. The ability to be able to plan and organize is why some of us are built the way that we are. Um, creative, being able to bring to life the 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 vision of the event through the event itself right in the venue and the lighting the design the music the food and then on the technology side the way it looks and it feels um but often it doesn't always feel that way there's stress when the event begins there's stress throughout it and then when it's over you're like oh, i can't wait for a two-week vacation instead of i can't wait to start building this i can't wait to start learning and i can't wait to have everyone start seeing this amazing work I'm doing. Um, I can't wait for the event to occur so I can get to see them all the magic happen. And then I can't wait for afterwards so that I can kind of learn and then begin getting excited about the next one. I know that's easier said than done, but that's what our focus is in cadence from a platform and service standpoint and what are we want most of our marketing to be in our webinars and in our blog articles and our case studies make everything easier so the focus can be purely on content and experiences so that events are as exhilarating as they're intended to be. And hopefully now handing it over to Carol, uh, you'll get to see some of the great things that we're working on to really guide and, and support you um, while you go about planning, organizing, hosting, and learning from corporate events. Thank you, everyone. And then Carol. Thanks, Michael. I was definitely taking mental notes throughout that uh, for all of our upcoming Cadence events. Um, and I know it looks like we're a little bit over time, but if you can stick around, uh, we have our very own customer success coordinator, Carolina, and she's going to show off one of our spring initiatives that will definitely help you make your life a little bit easier. And if you can't stick around, the recording will be available starting tomorrow in our Cadence webinars event. Let's kick it off to Carolina. Hi, I'm Carolina and I'm Customer Success Coordinator at Event Cadence. I'm based in Barcelona, Spain, and I'm really happy today to be speaking to you about a new amazing project we are right now at Event Cadence. First, I want to introduce myself by telling you a little bit about my, my personal background in the events industry, where before all our lives changed with the pandemic situation. I myself was used to work in the music and art shows industry where I had direct facing contact with our customers and attended all our shows in person, managing all the logistics live in the venue. But two years ago, all changed and honestly not for bad because I had the incredible opportunity and fortune to be became part of the Cadence family and expand my vision of the events industry by starting to work on them remotely. 
uh, all my team, or at least uh, a many part of my team is in the US, other ones in Switzerland, other ones in the Philippines. And uh, I was happy to be first introduced with the design team here in Barcelona. Uh, I started to learn how to make my virtual events, like all the virtual events that we work with, come to life. And with this, working with customers and colleagues all over the world, as I mentioned, which has been an amazing experience so far. Then not just this came, but when some of our routines were slowly turning to normal, we had the challenge to reactivate in-person events again, while still we wanted to keep connecting people all over the world uh, to these to all the events that are in again all over the world <laughs> um so when this came we thought okay we have to start with the hybrid world uh, and the hybrid events start coming to life uh so we had to start like a new path uh for this new project uh merging what we used to do with in-person projects and with virtual projects uh but in this case unify them both so we have like uh an experience that transcends uh, like uh, all the boundaries, like physical boundaries and now technological boundaries too. Um, and this has been really an, you know, an innovative challenge and uh, something cool to work with because has been, uh, been working not just us as a team, but with our customers. So we keep new ideas come up. They can uh, give us like new ideas for our platform to leverage our platform and as well we for them to for, the, for their event to become like uh, greater with a wider vision because of our experience. And of course, for us to give our cadence touch to their event. So it was really, really nice to start in this path. Um, and as well, because we are, we are, uh, we are an event uh, technology platform. So we're capable to do what we do right now with our customers and more as everything is evolving so fast. So, all this background to introduce you to a new project. We're putting, we're putting all our love uh, to become a time optimizer project and a good base for all event organizers who want to use our platform to be able to build their events. Uh, I used to track my time in some of my tasks to see how I advance as a CS and to be more accurate with my customers on how much time I, I spent on the tasks so I can communicate this to them and be totally transparent in the times that we are going to spend in the task and new ideas that come up uh, with them. So here is where comes the idea of uh, checklists, having checklists within our platform. Why? Because sometimes we have uh, the same tasks for all our projects, even if there are different kinds of events, but uh, we tend to follow like the same path. And of course, if we are using the same event platform. So this is a time optimizer because uh, we normally tend to go to our different uh, event management platform to follow the different uh, paths or rules or protocols we should do to build an event. but having a checklist within the Cadence platform actually reduces the time of doing each step and to uh, like um, kind of consult each different event management, management platform and have all of this in just one platform where you are using the checklist and checking it off while you're building the event in the same platform. So this is a new project that is coming and I'm very excited to show you, to show you a little sneak peek uh, about it. Um, and I want to talk to you about the purposes of this project. So for individual admins, they and us as event organizers may have processes which we want to formalize. Uh, and we, this is with the checklist that is now the idea that we have. This is visible within the event as we build, manage and execute the event as well as when we wrap it up and close the event. For teams as well, the teams may have processes that they want to formalize as well. Uh, so all the team can be aligned in one path and as well, not just to follow the checklist that we offer you, but as well to build a new checklist that can adapt to the different workflow of the teams in order to be kept, to work in your project and bring it to life. Why? Because different the, the events are all different. It could all be in person, hybrid or, in, or uh, virtual. And uh, you have, of course, different ways to work with yourself or with different teams. So this is the, the purpose of our project. Um, 
So I want to show you what it is about. And later we receive all the comments that you want. And of course, uh, we want you to be as excited as we are to launch this new project that will be coming soon. So here I show you how the checklist will look in the back end and how it currently uh, is the look of the checklist in the back end. Uh, I created some here, but you are totally free to create the checklist that best fit for your event, even if it's you, just you building the event or with a team. Uh, I can say that if you're working with a team, it would be updated through all the admins in the platform. So if you check a box of the checklist, others can see that that task is done. So if I show you, you will better understand. Uh, here you have the plus button where you can create a new checklist. So when it loads here, you, you can give a name to it and a description. Uh, here I created four checklists that we will offer you. The admin onboarding, meaning when you have a first experience with the platform, how will you onboard and create, have the first experience with our platform as an admin, as, in, as an event organizer. Then I uh, offer you a pre-event checklist. That is all what you have to do uh, to build the event before the day off. Then what we suggest you to do during the event, and then how can you wrap it up and keep uh, your attendees engaged to the event post the days of the, the event. So you will find the checklist here at the right side of the, of, the, of the platform. And for example, I want to see what can I do for building the event. So here, for example, it says pre-event checklist. If you want any information about it, you just click over here and you can see the information. Then if you go inside the checklist, it's not going to interrupt anything that you're doing here. Of course, it's going to take a little bit right now of the, of the visual uh, whole of the platform, but still you can go here and you would see all the different items that we offer you to do and to take care of uh, the building of your event. So as soon as, for example, you review the event um, on website and app and you go through all the event setup and I check you can be just checking and through each one, it's going to be when you come back and you start doing things, start uh, working with the platform and then come again to the checklist, you will see that it's crossed. Again, if you don't know, for example, uh, what is uh, a home screen review, review or a schedule review, what it's all about, you have uh, an informative icon that will show you what it is about. And here are like sub items for you to check. So go to the login page, confirm that the event support is going to be applicable. Um, everything here uh, as well. If you don't, and if you want to know more about the speakers or companies, if it's applicable for your event, you can always come and um, see the information of it. As well, when you build a checklist, you don't have to totally stick to it. If you want to edit them, you can always go to this little pencil and edit what you've built. Or if uh, one of our checklists fits you, but you still want to add something else, you can totally do it. You can assign for a, a task to some of your team uh, and due date. And if it's just you, the one that is doing the, that are doing all the, all the tasks of the event, you can put yourself a due date so you can know which timelines do you have to do a specific checklist. Uh, items of the checklist. So um, here is a quick uh, sneak peek of what the checklists are about. Um, again, you can create as much as you want. Uh, and here, what is very cool in the admin side is that it shows you which percentage of the checklist is completed. So you can go to the next one. Uh, and you have all the information here. You can edit it, delete it. Uh, but it will all be, hand, uh, be very handy here in the admin site. Of course, not in the front end because it's what your attendees see, but uh, it will actually optimize a lot of your time as well, how I told you, I used to uh, time track my tasks and just having it here handy just at the right side of what I'm doing and just checking really saves me a lot of time and guides me when I don't know how to do something or um, maybe it's the first time that I'm going to see the platform, I can always go here, consult and just do it by myself. Again, if you need any other help, you can reach us out as customer success uh, leads of your event so we can help you out with anything of the platform. So this was it. 
Thank you, Haley and Michael, for giving me the chance to tell our Cadence family who are watching this webinar to speak about the project that we are working on with so much love, with the purpose to make our time and our customers' time each time more valuable when using our platform to build amazing experiences. Hope the time that is saved with this tool uh, leads for new ideas to come and start proactively working on them using the checklist as the paper to release the written steps for making them come to life. I'm very excited to release this soon for all of you. Thank you for listening and watching and take care. Bye. Thanks, Carolina. I'm also really excited for that to go live. And um, if you're watching this and you're excited too, we will definitely keep you updated um, through emails and different posts to show you when that has gone live. And also thank you all for joining today and thanks for sticking around. Uh, as always, the recording will be available tomorrow in the Cadence Webinars event. And you will also get an email with all of the highlights and timestamps right to your inbox early next week. I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Bye. To sign up for our next webinar, check the link in the description. And for more information about Cadence, head to our website, eventcadence.com.